हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर जितेंद्र वशिष्ठ फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एंड बायोफॉर्मेटिक्स जेपी यूनिवर्सिटी इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी हिमाचल प्रदेश टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू अबाउट न्यूक्लियोसाइटोप्लाज्मिक ट्रांसपोर्ट व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन मॉलिक्युलर एंड सेलुलर बायोफिजिक्स पेपर न्यूक्लियस एंड साइटोप्लाज्म are two major entities which are responsible for all biological work performances of a living cell cellular functions are usually carried out by proteins which are synthesized by translation machinery and it is present in cytoplasm for protein translation molecular signals are required from genomic dna which results in synthesis of different rna therefore to complete the process of protein synthesis transport of rna has to be carried out from nucleus to cytoplasm similarly proteins from cytoplasm get transferred into nucleus all these mentioned processes show a continuous bidirectional molecular transport between the nucleus and the cytoplasm present module provides information using following objectives for such nucleo cytoplasmic transport and also structural elucidations of moieties which are responsible for these transport functions we have summarized the following learning objectives to achieve the information number 1 to elucidate the structural components of nucleus responsible for molecular transport number 2 to understand the basic structure and function of nuclear export machinery number 3 to classify the proteins of nuclear import and elucidate their function and lastly number 4 to elucidate the transport of different rna molecules from nucleus to cytoplasm we'll just coming to the introduction part of this module in which you will find that why nuclear transport is required if you see nucleus is a largest cell organelle in animal cells that occupies approximately 10% of cell volume with a volume of 6 micrometer diameter of a mammalian cell genomic dna is packed inside the nucleus with nuclear and membrane boundaries for separation of cytoplasm from nucleoplasm however a continuous exchange of biomolecules like proteins rna nutrient they take place through nuclear envelope which is crucial for homeostasis between these two portions as well as survival of the cell this exchange is carried out with the help of active nuclear cytoplasmic transport system in this system large cargo are recognized and bound to the soluble transport receptors that mediate transport through nuclear pore complex embedded in the nuclear envelope this transport is highly coordinated and any interference in transport process leads to abnormal function of the cell and severe human diseases therefore understanding the role of nuclear transport machinery and types of molecular transport like proteins rna etc in cellular organization is a necessary in the cell biology now coming to the part of structural component of nucleocytoplasmic transport the nucleus is a crammed into two concentric membranes which are called as nuclear envelope which are perforated by a pore complex that we call nuclear pore complexes if you see in the figure you will find that two membranes are separated even though inner and outer membrane of nucleus are continuous they sustain a discrete molecular components for example proteins that acts binding site for chromatin 
and provide a structural support for nuclear envelope are always present at inner nuclear membrane. Inner nuclear membrane is encircled by the outer membrane that is uninterrupted with the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum which are coming outside. The outer membrane of these continuous membrane is attached with ribosomes and engaged in translation product. Protein translated on these continuous membrane are transported to a perinuclear surfaces between inner and outer membrane. Continuous bidirectional trafficking of biomolecules occur between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Nuclear proteins like histones, gene regulatory proteins and replication and transcription enzymes are specifically imported into the nucleus from cytoplasm. Simultaneously, tRNA, mRNA, rRNA are have to export it to the cytoplasm from nucleus. Now, if you see the figure which shows the structure of nuclear envelope showing continuous inner and outer membrane of nucleus which are perforated by nuclear pore complexes. Nuclear envelope of each mammalian cell contains approximately 3000 to 4000 nuclear pore complexes which are responsible for molecular exchange between the nucleus and cytoplasm and also prevention of materials not to transport which are not destined to cross the nucleus. It means they have to remain into the nucleus. The nuclear pore complex is one of the largest protein complexes of a cell with a molecular mass of approximately 125 megadaltons or they will be present in each then they have 66 megadaltons. Structurally, nuclear pore complexes appear octagonal membrane st embedded structure containing eight filaments into nucleoplasm each about 100 nanometer long. Terminal rings join these filaments inside the nucleoplasm and form a structure called nuclear basket. Each nuclear pore complex is composed of about 30 different types of proteins called nucleoporins and multiple copies of these proteins are arranged in prominent octagonal symmetry. A subset of nucleoporins containing phenylalanine glycine that we call the FG repeats is a core of 20 to 30 nanometer wide nucleopore complex. This FG repeat rich domains forms hydrophobic meshwork that allows the diffusion of macromolecules greater than 40 kd of size. This figure shows the structure of nuclear pore complex. In every second, single nuclear pore complex can transport up to 500 molecules in both the directions. The mechanism for this coordination is still not fully understood. However, one or more aqueous passes present in each NPC or nuclear pore complex allows very fast passive diffusion of small water soluble molecules up to 5 kd limit. Transport of macromolecules through NPC is fundamentally different from transport across the membrane of other cell organisms where proteins are transported through a large pore instead of transporter spanning the lipid membrane. This is the reason of transport of fully load folded nuclear protein inside and ribosomal subunits outside the nucleus. Proteins localized in the nucleus of an amphibian oocyte contain a stretch of amino acids near its C terminal that we call nuclear localization signals that enables protein to pass through nuclear pore complex and enter the nucleus. These NLS signals are generally present as amino acid sequence in a protein and they are thought to loop on protein surfaces. These NLS are composed of one 
or two stretches of positively charged amino acids which are basically lysine and alginine and if you see the signal they started from proline and they have lysine alginine ly lysine valine i'll give the example analyst signal was identified on t antigen and coded by sp40 virus if a single amino acid of this NLS sequence is replaced by nuclear, neutral amino acid, that protein will unable to localize in the nucleus. On the other hand, if non-nuclear protein like serum albumin get fused with NLS signals and injected in cytosol, the protein get localized into the nucleus. Transport through NPC can be visualized by attachment of NLS with cold nanoparticle that are injected into the cytosol that can be recorded with the help of electron microscope. Transport begins when these particles bind with the tentacles, tentacles like fibrils of NPC into cytoplasm, probably with the reasons of NPC that acts as barrier for transport of large molecule that are pushed away and hence coated particles can enter through now coming to nuclear import receptors localization of nuclear proteins that contain nls is only takes place after the recognition by nuclear import receptors import receptors are present in the cytosol as soluble proteins and have ability to interact with both that is to the npc and nls of cytoplasmic proteins fg repeats of nuclear proteins acts as binding site for import receptors they are thought to form a patch inside npc for transport of cargo proteins bound to import receptors transport of this receptor cargo complex is not just through binding with fg repeats but it includes binding dissociation and rebinding with fg repeat sequences after transport of cargo proteins into the nucleus, nuclear import receptors get dissociated from cargo proteins and return back to the cytosol. Direct binding of nuclear proteins and import receptor is not obvious, but sometimes additional adapter proteins can form bridges between import receptor and nuclear localization signal of nuclear protein to be transported the another thing is nuclear export receptors the export of large molecules like ribosomal subunits and rna from nucleus is only possible in the presence of nuclear export signals which are present on the surface of these macromolecules and their complementary nuclear export receptors these export receptors are capable of binding with both to the nuclear pore complexes, proteins and export signals. It has been found that the structure of many nuclear export receptor is similar, very similar to the nuclear import receptors and both are encoded by same gene family of nuclear transport receptors or karyophyrin. It is expected that both these transport systems work same way but in opposite direction. Coming to a specialized system that we call the RAN GTPA system which are required for transport through nuclear power complexes. Nuclear specific proteins are concentrated into the nucleus. Energy required to achieve this process is obtained by hydrolysis of GTP by a protein that we call the RAN GTPase. RAN is basically RA related nuclear protein is a small G nuclear protein with GTP binding domain. This RAN is involved in both processes that is nuclear import as well as nucleus export and is found in nucleus as well as cytoplasm. RAN is essential for the translocation of RNA and protein through the nuclear pore complexes. Similar to other GTPs, RAN also exhibit in two 
conformation depending upon binding of GTP and GDP. Conversion between GTP and GDP is triggered by two RAN specific regulatory proteins that includes isocytosolic GTPase activating factor that we call a gap and a nuclear guanosine exchange factor that we call GAF. This figure 3 shows a schematic representation of import and export of molecule through nuclear pore complex with the help of ren jeff system. ren gap is accountable for hydrolysis of GTP and therefore converts ren GTP into ren GDP where GAF GAF guanine exchange factor is responsible for conversion of ren GDP into again in ren GTP by exchanging ren bound GTP GDP to GDP. As ren gap is located in the cytosol, it is responsible for presence of ren GTP in the cytosol. Similarly, location of ren GF in the nucleus is responsible for presence of ren GTP in the nucleus. This gradient of two RAN conformation is principal for major nuclear transport in appropriate direction. When import receptor is loaded with appropriate cargo protein, it leads to the docking of nuclear import receptor with FG repeats on cytosolic side of the NPC. Once there is the nuclear side of the NPC, RAN GTP bind with to them and allow the release of bound cargo. Since REN GTP present in cytosol, it is incapable of to bound cargo receptor and hence unloading cannot occur in cytosol. In this way, localization of REN GTP in nucleus create a directionality of transport across NPC. Now coming to a bigger figure that we call the RNA export from nucleus to cytoplasm. If you see, for successful gene expression, different RNA species has to be transported from nucleus to cytoplasm. Small RNA like tRNA, microRNA, etc., are transported by directly binding with the export receptors. However, mRNA and ribosomal RNAs are larger RNA species, which first assemble into ribonucleoprotein particle that's called RNP particle and then they recruited their exported via class specific adapter proteins. Primarily mRNA precursors undergo 5 prime end capping, splicing and cleavage polyadenylation at 3 prime end. During this process the mRNA interact with different kind of proteins and form a stable messenger ribonucleoprotein that's you call the mRNP particle. Now I'll just talk about tRNA and mRNA export. Although tRNA are synthesized as a larger precursor in the nucleus by RNA polymerase tree. However, these are needed in the cytoplasm in amino acetylated tRNA form with a peculiar short length containing single stranded loop and double stranded mini helix regions that fold in a uniform clover leaf structures for ribosomal translation. Therefore, before export to cytoplasm, tRNA undergoes processing steps which include 5' prime and 3' prime trailer sequencing removal, addition of CCA nucleotide at 3' prime end to form amino acid acceptor stem intron removal if they are present by tRNA splicing endonuclease and base modifications by tRNA modifying enzymes. After these processing of mature tRNA are preferentially attached to a exporter receptor which is known as exportin T. It is a member of the family karyophyrin in a REN GTP dependent manner and export it to the cytoplasm. In cytoplasm, REN gap stimulates GTP hydrolysis on REN which 
induces dissociation of tRNA from the complex of tRNA export in T GTP. Similar to export in T, we have another member of karyophyllin family which is known as export in 5 and it is responsible to export miRNA and these miRNAs are regulatory non-coding RNAs. Now coming to a export of snRNA. These are spisosomal RNA which participate in the removal of intron from pre-mRNA and they are placed in between small tRNA, miRNA and long mRNA or rRNAs. Although snRNA are required in the splicing of mRNA in the nucleus, but their export from the nucleus and import again to function in the splicing is still unknown. However, it was proposed that the cytoplasmic export of snRNA during biogenesis might provide a proofreading step to prevent nuclear accumulation of non-functional snRNA. All snRNA except U6 are synthesized by Pol2 as pre-snRNA and these acquire a 5' cap which has the nuclear export signal. Export of snRNA require nuclear export signal containing adapter proteins that is called FACs for recruitment of export receptors. CRM1 is the export receptor for snRNA which does not directly interact with the snRNA cargo but require the cap binding complex that is called CBC and fax adapter proteins to be targeted to the 5' cap of the snRNA. Phosphorylation of fax in the nucleus is required for recruitment of CRM1 and REN GTP to bind to the CBC bound SRNA complex. After export to the cytoplasm, GTP hydrolysis of REN and FAX dephosphorylation takes place, which dissociate the export complex and SRNA get released into the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, the survival of motor neurons that is called the SMN complex facilitates the assembly of exported SRNA with the heteroheptameric rings of SM proteins which bind to the conserved SM binding site of snRNA. SM proteins binding induces trimethylation at 5' cap and exonucleotic degradation of 3' Taylor sequences. These processes make a pre-snRNA into mature snRNPs which provides a composite nuclear targeting signal for subsequent nuclear import. After re-import into a nucleus, SNRNPs together with other splicing factors assemble into the functional spelosomes. Now student, we will talk about the export of mRNAs. Eukaryotic mRNA are synthesized by Paul II as pre-mRNA and have different length, sequences and structures. However, mature RNA, mRNA basically share common structural features like 5' end capping, splicing and polyadenylation at 3' end. The mRNA export pathway is conserved from yeast to humans, although every model organism has its own unique properties. During the successive step of messenger RNPs formation, many RNA binding and modifying proteins, for example capping, splicing, processing factors are recruited to the nascent transcripts. The mRNA exporter bind to RNA along with the adapter RNA binding proteins. The mRNA exporter acts as a RAN GTP independent manner due to the structural unrelatedness to the karyophyllin. However, like karyophyllins, the mRNA exporter directly interact with phenylglycine rich repeats of Fg nucleoporins and allows it to overcome the permeability barrier of nuclear pore complex which is generated due to the Fg nucleopore, nucleoporine meshwork. There are several general mRNA export receptors 
to transport mRNPs through the nuclear pore complex. Among these is MAX67 and MTR2 complex and homologous metagen TAP P15 complex which is also known as NXF1 and XT1 are past studied export receptors. Although general RAN GTP dependent protein export receptor CRM1 does not have any major role in export of mRNA export, but it has been observed that CRM1 can be involved in the nuclear export of several protoncogene as well as cytokines, which contains AU rich elements in their 3' UTRs. It is also been involved in nuclear export of number of unsplice and partially splice viral mRNAs. The mRNA export receptor is targeted to different transcripts by export adapters that are typically mRNA binding proteins. The YRA1 YRA is in yeast and can associate directly with general mRNA exporter. There are certain proteins that you call the SRS which are serine arginine rich proteins also function as adapters and regulate the multiple steps of mRNA metabolism including mRNA export, their stability and translation. After splicing, several SR proteins remain bound to the splice transcript and then they are exported to the cytoplasm where the dissociation of transcripts occur and SR proteins are re-imported again. SR proteins are basically evolutionary conserved phosphoproteins and has been observed that cycle of phosphorylation and dephosphorylation of specific SR proteins. Basically, I'll give you the example that's NPL3. It results in directionality during mRNA export in yeast. NPL3, when present in cytoplasm, gets phosphorylated by a protein that's called SKY1 kinase and stimulates its own import into the nucleus where it can associate with nascent transcript in a transcription dependent manner. In the nucleus, NLP3 becomes dephosphorylated by nuclear phosphatase enzymes that's called GLC7 and then it interact with the MAX67 MTR export receptors. After transport of mRNP into the cytoplasm, NLP3 rephosphorylated again, which destabilizes the interaction with, between NLP3 with the mRNA and the MAX67 complex. Now, students, we talk about the regulation of nuclear transport through NPCs. During transport, there are certain proteins, for example, those binded to nucleus, newly synthesized mRNA in the nucleus contain both nuclear localization as well as nuclear export signals. These proteins frequently shuttle alternating between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Their relative rates of their import and export determine the steady state localization of such shuttling proteins. If the rate of import is more than the rate of export, a protein will be located primarily in the nucleus and vice versa for a protein located mainly in the cytosol. A number of shuttling pro proteins move insensate into and out of the nucleus and in other cases the transport is stru strictly controlled. For example, regula regulatory proteins that control gene expression are only imported when they are required into the nuclear. Transport across nuclear pore complex is mostly controlled by regulation of NLS and export signal. Phosphorylation of amino acids in proximity of signal sequence can allow occurrence of these transport events. In another cases, binding of inhibitory protein to gene regulatory protein either anchor them into cytosol by interacting with organelle or mass their analysis so that they cannot interact with nuclear 
import receptors in such cases in such cases transport across nucleus is possible only in the presence of appropriate stimulus that release cytosolic anchor or mask important example for such regulation is the latent gene regulatory protein that control the expression of proteins involved in cholesterol metabolism another translation this after translation this protein is stored in inactive form as transmembrane protein in the endoplasmic reticulum under distribute cholesterol levels the proteins enter into the golgi apparatus where specific proteases cleave it and release into the cytosol then this protein localized into the nucleus and control the expression of other genes acquired for cholesterol import and synthesis now students we summarize the whole topic as nuclear pore complex are proteinous channels which are present in the nuclear envelope and are responsible for the active nuclear cytoplasmic transport nuclear proteins are imported from cytoplasm as their nuclear localization signal that's we call the nls are recognized by soluble import receptors similarly nuclear export signals that's we call the nes help in export of proteins from nucleus with the help of soluble export receptors presence of ran gtp in the cytoplasm and ran gtp in the nucleus is a key to control directions of transport export for nucleus is not only restricted to proteins only and a wide variety of rna molecules are also exported to cytoplasm for different cellular processes like translations export of small rna like trna microrna small nuclear sn rna follows the general pattern of involvement of exporting that's we call the carophyrin family and ran gtp gtp system however mrna export does not directly depend on the ran gtp gtp system and it's mechanically different due to the usage of transport receptor that is unrelated to carophyrin different additional export factors like adapters and release factors are associated with the mrna export receptors thank you